Hello everyone, today we are looking at another Dan Huff lick. This is a combination phrase that combines some of Dan's speed picking technique, legato and also blending in some diatonic arpeggios. We're going to look at the context that the lick can be used in and then break it down phrase by phrase. Now, this comes from a track that Dan played on by Shaka Khan called Watching the World. And the original version centers around E flat Dorian. The progression that it uses is like this. Which all comes from the key of D flat major. And we're basically centering around the two chord moving up to the three, the four, and then the five. The first two being minor, and then the third and fourth being major. For the sake of making this lesson a little bit more straightforward, we're gonna put this into the key of C, which means that we're gonna be learning this lick in D e Dorian. It's gonna make it a little bit easier to visualize and a little bit easier to transpose into different contexts. So this lick focuses on two three note per string patterns taken from the Dorian mode. Um, these connect into another arpeggio shape taken from elsewhere within the key. So to begin with, we are visualizing this root note. We're looking at D at the 12th fret of the low E string, and we are starting one shape up from there at the 12th fret. Start by placing your index finger at the 12th fret of the E string, and our first phrase is all legato. So we're going to hammer up to the 13th and 15th fret, and then pull off back to the 12th again. So for this part of the phrase, you're only picking the first note, everything else is going to be legato. Make sure that every note is nice and even in terms of its dynamics, and make sure that you are on the tips of your fingers so that you get good connection with every note. Now, the next part of our phrase sees a little bit of this speed picking technique that we've seen Dan use in the past, where we are basically uh, picking two out of three notes and then using the gato for the last one. So the first time we see this is on the B string, where we are gonna pick the 15th fret and the 13th as a down and an upstroke and then pull off to the 12th. So the first two phrases are At this point, we start to transition into a new position of the scale. So we are going to locate our little finger at the 14th fret of the G, pick the 14th and the 12th, and then pull off to the 10th. So combined with the first two. And then we slide down one fret to the 9th. So you can see that we have now moved into our original position, the 10th fret, which is where we launch the second part of our phrase, which goes like this. Okay. We are gonna start this with a pull off from the 12th to the 9th fret on the D string. And then we're gonna hammer back up through the degrees of the scale in order, 10th fret and then 12th fret. At this point, you are going to move your index fingers to the 9th fret of the G before we descend down the way that we came. Now, the one thing that is a little bit tricky about this is that we're gonna move into another position again. So rather than landing back on the 9th fret of the D, we actually skip a scale degree and we drop down to the A at the seventh fret of the D string. So really slowly, it sounds like this. There's not any way to do that that isn't quite awkward because what's happening is you are coming back from your little finger to your middle finger at the 10th fret. And then in order to get into your next position, you have to stretch all the way down to the seventh fret of the D string between your middle and your index finger. It's just awkward. Um, but you can make it a little bit easier with how you move your wrist. So a little bit like when we're doing uh, bigger legato shapes, if you bend your wrist and bring it forward, 
you'll find that you have a much greater stretch with these fingers than if you're keeping your wrist straight. So, uh, the first kind of two and a half phrases. Okay, now this is where the whole diatonic arpeggio thing comes in. So, what we're actually doing is borrowing an arpeggio from elsewhere within the key. So if we're thinking that overall we're in the key of C major, that means the chords we have available to us are C, B minor, E minor, F, G, A minor, and then B diminished. And what Dan does at this point in the lick is basically nick a A minor 7 arpeggio from elsewhere in that key, which is really cool because if we're thinking about this over a D minor 7, he's highlighting some interesting intervals because if we play an A minor 7 arpeggio against a D minor 7 chord, well, what are we doing? Let's have a look. We have the fifth, we have the flat 7, we have the second, and then we have the fourth. So we get this little cluster of quite interesting intervals. Okay, and this is another kind of combination phrase, partly legato, partly arpeggios. I'll talk about how to pick this stuff in just a minute, but in terms of the notes, we're gonna hammer from the seventh to the tenth. We are then gonna play only one note on the G string, which is the ninth fret. We're then gonna hammer from the eighth to the tenth, and then come back down the phrase. So pulling off to the eighth, and then pulling off from the ninth to the seventh. And then we're gonna go back up the way we came. So very slowly. And in context. That's it. Okay, uh, a few words just on the technique side of things. So it's really worth um, considering the economy of your picking when you're approaching a lip like this, because if you can get that kind of dialed into your muscle memory, you're gonna find it a lot easier. Otherwise you may uh, stumble at certain parts in the phrase. So I'm gonna kind of talk you through how I'm doing it and you can use that as a starting point. Um, with that phrase, we're obviously gonna start on a downstroke. But then for the next two parts of the phrase, we're going to go down, up, pull off for both of those. It's very much like the speed pick and lick we looked at a few lessons back. Okay, so down, down, up, down, up, slide. With this little bit, uh, we can kind of use alternate picking because the note groupings and the use of legato means that it's actually fine to do that. It's pretty straightforward. Um, you're always thinking about where your next note is going to be and that's going to dictate the pick strokes that you use. You want to try and avoid landing uh, the wrong side of the strings so that you have further to travel. Now with this bit, uh, a little bit awkward, but I personally would see if you can economy pick it. So with the arpeggio bit, because we have groups of two notes and one note alternating, you can legitimately use downstrokes for all of it. The only bit where you wouldn't is when you come back on yourself. So very slowly, down, hammer, down, down. So that's where you have the economy part of it. And then we're going to throw in one upstroke as we come back, and then the rest of it can be downstrokes again. So slowly, down, 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 up, down, down. Okay, so almost all downstrokes, only one upstroke. Okay, so there's three things we can take away from this. The first is the use of combining different techniques, um, taking some straight legato phrases and connecting them with Dan's speed picking technique where we're picking two out of three notes. Um, this is a nice way to create a bit of momentum and a nice kind of rolling sound. 
The second thing we've looked at is how to move between different scale shapes. So these have both been positions from Dorian, but by using this idea of either pulling off or using the kind of Dan Huff uh, pick pick pull off technique, but then connecting it to a fourth note via a slide, it means that you're able to move between these different parts of the neck quite fluidly. The final thing which we could potentially borrow is Dan's use of um, bringing in arpeggios from somewhere other than the tonic that you're playing over. So in this case, it means having a little bit of awareness about what key you're playing in, so you know what arpeggios you have available to you. In this case, we're in the key of C, we're centering around D Dorian, and we're borrowing an A minor seven arpeggio from that key, which creates a nice little interesting cluster of intervals, and again, gives a nice kind of fluid sound. Okay, folks, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I'll be back with more Dan Huff and Steve Lucas stuff for you soon. See you later.